Today here at MWC 2025, thank you very much. We are here at AWS Studio with Dragana Linfrin for Liberty Latin America. Thank you very much. We will talk a little bit around the remarkable success in this digital transformation journey with AWS. My name is Jesus Federico. I'm a principal solution architect from AWS. Thank you very much, Dragana. Dragana, can you introduce yourself and your role? Thank you very much for inviting me to be here. Um, I'm Dragana Linfield, and uh, I have 25 years of uh, global telecom experience, uh, working uh, with uh, uh, big telecom groups, uh, such as uh, Vodafone, Telefonica, and Etisalat across different continents uh, on their transformation uh, uh, change. Uh, currently, in the last three years, I have been working with Liberty Latin America as a senior director for digital transformation. And uh, lately, I've been really focusing on AI and its vast potential. Awesome. And tell us about LLA. What, what is, how is Liberty Latin America, how they operate in different markets? Liberty Latin America is a telecommunication company that operates in the Caribbean and Latin America. And uh, we have 20 plus uh, uh, operations, uh, business uh, B2C operations and 30 plus B2B operations. And uh, we uh, operate under the brands BTC, Flow, uh, Liberty and Nasmobile. Uh, the residential portfolio includes uh, uh, broadband, uh, fixed telephony, uh, and uh, internet, and then also mobile services. Awesome. And, and let's, let's walk our, a little bit around this digital transformation. Why Liberty Latin America decided to do this digital transformation? So before digital transformation, uh, we were facing uh, some challenges. And uh, some of them, uh, I'm just going to highlight, uh, let's say, three of the most important challenges. Uh, first of all, uh, intensifying competition. And that competition was coming uh, from the traditional players and also from OTT players. Uh, the second one uh, was uh, costs and churn, because uh, telco normally relies uh, a lot on customer service. Uh, and also, the cost was coming from uh, uh, siloed operations and one of the uh, kind of the third one uh, was uh, uh, in the customer experience because customers uh, were uh, wanting seamless experience uh, fast and omnichannel experience tell me about the first steps that Liberty Latin America have done in this digital transformation journey so basically uh, we realized that uh, uh, all of those challenges could not be efficiently solved uh, by doing incremental changes and incremental projects in each of our markets. And uh, uh, the first step we did to even start in, uh, digital transformation was to get the clear vision from our group CEO. And the clear vision was uh, to become digital first organization and to transform the way we engage with our customers. So as a result of that, what we did is we created the Digital Center of Excellence that would serve all our 20 markets. Awesome. And you mentioned that you transform the way you engage to the customer. Can you elaborate a little bit more how you did that transformation? Yes, yeah, certainly. So uh, uh, we did uh, uh, create a new uh, digital journeys. We designed new digital journeys that were uh, uh, frictionless and seamless so that our customers could engage uh, with our brand on any digital channel, e-commerce or e-care, anytime or anywhere. And after this digital transformation and redesigning this uh, journey, this customer journey, what happened next? So uh, we had to find the best technology provider and uh, uh, the best technology provider given our multi-markets uh, was AWS because uh, uh, it would guarantee our uh, scale and our multi-markets, it's, it's a global provider and also because of the scalability, elasticity and mainly because this transformation could not have been done without AI, ML and uh, you guys are leader. And tell us about the solution. How do you build this solution that covers multiple markets? How do you 
deploy that solution and how do you create it? Yeah, so uh, before building the solution, we, uh, f we decided to uh, replace uh, the legacy uh, uh, data centers uh, that, and solutions that each individual market had. And we decided to create uh, one unified digital experience platform that would be the solution for all our markets instead of doing 20 solutions. And the second thing we did was to unify uh, our fragmented data silos and to create one data lake, one single repository where we put information for all data sources. And uh, that would actually give us a 360 view of our customers because we really are data oriented and it will help us make better decisions. Awesome. And what? are those key requirements that require the solution in order to be implemented and deployed? So uh, the solution uh, um, needed to be future-proof because we are not only doing this for today and then also needed to be flexible because we don't know what variables we need in, are going to happen in the a, in a, in a future. So in order to do that, our, we have adopted a, a microservices architecture, uh, which meant that uh, uh, every service, be it provisioning or billing, was independent uh, and could, uh, uh, could be changed independently without affecting other services. Then we adopted the API first approach because this platform has no value on itself and it had to be integrated with our markets and other systems. So for that we used APIs and we were integrating with our BSS, with our CRM, we were integrating with third parties, uh, payment gateways, etc. And then the third thing, we created a, a headless architecture uh, that uh, uh, they decoupled architecture as opposed to monolith architecture. Right. And that was very important because uh, we wanted to achieve independence between the front end uh, visuals of the customer, visual experience, and the back end which also meant that every time we changed the front end, there was no impact on business logic. And equally, we were able to change, add, remove technology providers without impacting the front end. Awesome, awesome. And can you elaborate a little bit as you operate in different markets, how you can uh, guarantee or assure the best quality of service for those markets? Exactly. So. Um, so basically, just to kind of give a little bit more context on that, uh, it was a complex situation because we had a monorepo architecture as well. And that architecture meant that we have one code repository serving various markets. So the advantages of that were we were able to reuse the code and we achieved about 60% reusability for that code, uh, leveraging on other markets. The other 40%, we had to make it different and we used parameterized configuration uh, to adapt to local market needs, the currency, the language, uh, and also regulatory requirements. So the kind of uh, uh, where we had to be very careful about was uh, that if we made a mistake in one market, uh, that could possibly affect other markets. All right. And in order to kind of be careful about that, first of all, we did really very good testing. We have regression testing and the right. tools and everything. But we really take advantage of AWS uh, uh, tool to uh, actually minimize the faults. It's called circuit breaker pattern. It would recognize uh, the problem and isolate the problem from the rest of the markets. So if, if there is a problem in a particular market, it's not expanded across every market. Exactly. And also, how, how do you leverage like the CDN infrastructure of AWS? So the CDN infrastructure uh, was great for us because uh, uh, since you operate in so many different areas and we operate in so many different areas, for us it impo was important to guarantee quality of service for our end customers. So when they go online, they wanted to have a very fast interaction. And so what we did is we have placed the static content close to the uh, end subscriber in your edge network. Yeah, that affects obviously the customer experience and the, and the performance. Yes. And, and thank you, we, we already have deployed more than 700 point of presence worldwide of the AWS infrastructure. Let me continue a, real, a little bit around the solution. How was the importance of automation in this solution for, from the business perspective on, on, on this digital transformation? Yes, I mean, automation was the key uh, element in our digital transformation because uh, 
previously our customers uh, would uh, have to do everything uh, uh, manually and uh, and by automating that uh, we have removed our customer care agents uh, from actually being involved because everything was done uh, uh, automatically thanks to the AI and automation regarding the uh, purchasing process uh, for e-commerce. Awesome and what about digital care transformation? Yeah, digital care transformation was also huge because uh, uh, just to give you a picture, we have customers uh, who are in one market and if they have a prepaid and a postpaid account and fixed account, they would have to download three different applications. Right. Now, we, and that would be the case in every market. Now we have only one application and the application, the system recognizes exactly what type of the customer it is and it displays all three accounts within the same uh, bracket. And then we also introduced the, the chatbots, which are also AI based to take the most uh, uh, frequent questions uh, from the customers without uh, uh, having to use uh, the customer care agents. Awesome, awesome. And let's dive a little bit on, on the IML space. How Liberty Latin America is uh, leveraging AIML in their journey, in, the, in their uh, in the footprint and application for deployment this. Yeah, that was another strong reason why we selected uh, AWS as our technology provider. So uh, first of all, uh, uh, data uh, strategy uh, is in the center of our uh, transformation as well. And uh, we don't make any decisions that are not data-based. So yeah. everything has to be data-based. Uh, and for that, we use AI. Uh, and the first application of AI was in our, to, to enhance the digital sales. Right. And we used AI to personalize uh, uh, customers' products uh, to recommend them something that was relevant to them and resonated with them. And the second uh, uh, example, we used also AI for the virtual sale assistant to uh, accompany the customer through the sales journey in order for him not to give up because we had a lot of abandoned carts until we implemented AI in that process. And then the second one was in the digital care. Awesome. Uh, and what about, uh, what about prediction of the churn in this uh, using AI ML? for Liberty Latin America, how, yeah, how that was, was they? Yeah, that was fantastic work that we actually done together with AWS. Uh, we used SageMaker to develop a model uh, and then we input a lot of data, process data to that model to learn about uh, uh, what would be the probability of our customer for churn. And then we would intervene before the churn actually happened by uh, giving him appropriate offers uh, to make him feel valuable and to make him, make him feel heard by LLA. So how, how you measure success of this solution and this digital transformation after all the work that have been done together? Yeah, we are actually very proud of our achievements uh, and uh, we have achieved uh, great results. The first one would be the the 25% uh, that digital sales account of the total sales in LLA, which is great. Some markets have more, uh, that's on average. Uh, and uh, uh, not only did we get those sales through a new digital channel, but every sale that we did has bigger ARPU than uh, other channels, be it uh, you know the channels uh, like a retail or anybody else, and uh, those uh, uh, achievements are thanks to thanks to AI because AI was able to upsell to the customer, knowing exactly which type of the customer uh, they were, and then also the type of the customer that comes, they have a longer lifetime uh, value and they stay longer with us. Uh, and other result is the uh, customer acquisition. Uh, customer acquisition cost is much lower through digital and that also is uh, uh, because everything is done automatically and the customer agent doesn't even have to involve in that purchase. Purchase can be completed only in a couple of clicks. Uh, and uh, so that's like the, from the sales perspective and now from the operational cost perspective uh, we achieved a very significant reduction of cost because of so many different factors. All right. The first factor was thanks to AWS infrastructure because we went from on-premise, we went to the cloud. But the beauty of that is that AWS is able to scale in an elastic way to increase or decrease uh, the amount of uh, servers because from our side it's serverless yeah. depending on the traffic demand uh, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, so and the second reason for the cost reduction was automating all of our processes. So we have automated a big 
percentage of critical processes. So we don't need sales agent or customer care agent to do anything because they are automatic. Uh, and uh, uh, so, yeah, the, the cost reduction is also achieved through uh, monorepo architecture. All right because we don't have to develop services for each individual markets. We do it for all because it's one platform and then we do slight customization. And it seems like this solution also uh, enables you to be faster on the market. Can you uh, tell me a little bit of the results on the fast uh, the time to market in, in yes. this using this solution yes the time to market but actually went lowered for 50 percent so we are we are much faster now uh, for so many different reasons one is because we continue to have center of excellence that is uh, uh, creating a, a backlog of features what will really work so I also want to mention that uh, not only do we only develop once because it's one DXP, but also before we start developing any feature, we use A-B testing right. to check whether there is any impact on sales, and only then we commit to development. So we really only develop the features that make, uh, make the that impact. That matters for yeah, your customer, that and that for sure it may impact the customer satisfaction Yes, also. exactly. What advice could you give to any other telecommunication company that is embarking their own digital transformation journey? So uh, the most important thing is the, the, the mere reason why are we doing digital transformation and that will be the customer experience. So everything that is done, we have to put the customer in the center of our design and uh, uh, achieve the seamless and frictionless experience for that customer uh, in any industry. Then uh, the second thing is that uh, uh, in order to manage the costs, uh, agility and flexibility, we, uh, they have to go for cloud-based solution with AI, AI ML-based, because automation uh, is not uh, achieved without AI. Uh, so they have to be data-oriented and make data decisions uh, uh, based. And then also they have to be having architecture that will accommodate uh, for the future, future services, uh, emerging technologies. Uh, so they, they, they have to use a similar architecture that AWS has, uh, which is microservices based, uh, which is uh, uh, API centric, uh, and that's, that's really very important. And uh, they have to keep innovating. And the best way to keep innovating is to align themselves with a technology partner that is innovating themselves, yeah. uh, like AWS is. So it seems like you need to have a, like a long-term vision for success. It's not a short-term uh, vision for, for this digital transformation. Exactly. It's, not all, it's never finished. The journey is never finished, and customers expect us to keep innovating. Thank you very much, Dragana. Amazing results. And thank you for sharing all this information with us here at MWC 2025. Thank you very much. Thank you.